I think it's fair to say that since Concord literally speed ran what it is to fail as a computer game and now definitely holds the world record, that gamers have been drinking the tears of the studios and people that have failed at these awful games that no one wanted over the past few days. Now, I don't think people are really celebrating the fact that individuals are probably going to lose their jobs over incidents like these. I think it's more that people just like to see the consumer win. When the consumer tells you, hey, we don't want this game, and you make it anyway, and you call the consumer all kinds of isms and names because they don't want to buy it, they kind of feel justified when you get shut down. I don't think that means people aren't sympathetic towards needing to have a job and a roof over your head, it's just more the kind of cultural politics and consumer ethics behind gaming. But oh boy, oh boy, are there some people who have zero sympathy because in a recent interview given a few days ago, the former Sony CEO, Chris Deering, you know, the man that uh, basically sold the PlayStation system to the West and turned Sony PlayStation into this huge market success, recently gave an interview in which case he said that, sorry, um, that gamers, sorry, that game developers who have been laid off in the past year due to all of these changes that we've seen in the marketplace need to drive an Uber for a while or move to the beach for a year. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm struggling today. Uh, I didn't sleep well, which makes me giggly, and then have to, having to read this in the morning. So yeah, this is crazy. Deering just basically like walked out of a meme that ends, okay, boomer, like, who can afford a house by the beach now when you're unemployed? What the hell? Does he, does he think that it's like San Francisco in the 1970s where somebody's like, man, I'm gonna drop out of Berkeley and just like go to the beach. Does that even work? Is Berkeley near the beach? My Californian geography sucks. Um, I once had a professor for Berkeley. He was kind of cool though. Anyways, moving on. Though, despite all the rage aimed at him, he actually does make a good point that uh, a lot of people didn't want to hear. And I think that gamers will resonate with. During the interview, he says, look, it's not greed. We're not making money. If the games aren't making money, and specifically he says, if the consumers aren't there, he's essentially um, putting the layoffs not on corporate greed, but on the consumer. If we don't buy the games, the people that make the games get fired. And that to me sounds reasonable. If there was a lot of positive hype from the gamer community surrounding a game like Concord, if influencers were all over talking about how great a game it was, the studio wouldn't be in the trouble that it's in now. Gaming has always, always been, even from the 80s and early 90s, I remember, a place where your street cred matters. Back in the day, and I think Sid Meier's Civilizations is the only one I can think of to still do it, being a game developer, as a person even, carried a lot of weight. I'd buy a game with Sid Meier's on it, even though it went from Civilization to Pirates. I'd buy a game with Peter Molyneux's name on it, until I wouldn't buy a game with Peter Molyneux's name on it because Peter Molyneux started making really bad games. Or I'd buy a game with Lord British's name on it because I like the Ultima series. Your credibility matters and back in the 80s and 90s, if you ruined your credibility with a bad game, you just went out of business and probably never worked in the industry again. And I think with in the 2000s and into the 20s, 2010s, a lot of these gaming studios adopted more of a friendly Silicon Valley-esque workspace. And of course, anybody that's worked for a company before and has a head on their shoulders knows anytime your company is too friendly to you, they're probably just lying. And now they're seeing the ugly face of the industry for what it is, not creative, beautiful endeavors, but trying to make money based off consumers. Nonetheless, despite saying the obvious thing that is obviously true, and I think it's still good for some people to hear, uh, screw this guy. This, the, it's it's one of the most unbelievably asinine comments I've heard from a former CEO in a long time. But uh, let's let's see how this goes down on Twitter of all places, because the only place we're going to find something less reasonable than what Chris Deering said is probably on Twitter for a comparison. We've got this one here I like by Bite. Drive an Uber, you know, one of the most unforgiving jobs on the planet while you keep up your dev skills and wait for jobs to come back. Find a cheap place to live? Where? There are no cheap places to live. 
Okay. Yeah. I just love unqualifiedly. There are no cheap places to live. Uh, in like where the United States, <laughs> like I, I, people got to be from California and they think California is the world. But California is pretty expensive from what I hear. Um, I just love this. This is the sort of thing you can only find on Twitter that drive an Uber is one of the most unforgiving jobs on the planet. Dude, there are guys mining salt in the world right now. There are people in sulfur mines, but driving an Uber as a freelancer is one of the most difficult, unforgiving jobs on the planet. Just Twitter. Twitter is amazing, man. Twitter is just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unique place. We've got the most liked comment on here from Sean Gandert, who says, Sorry, I'm not listening to this one. I feel enough anger towards people like him already. Don't need to embrace that feeling for another hour. Which is like the most Twitter comment ever, because if you notice there's like a trend on Twitter where people don't think that they can control their own emotions, like I can read something online that offends me and then go, hmm, moving on doing something else, making a YouTube video. But no, this guy, if he watches that, he has to think about it for the next hour. And finally, we have one comment in support of him from someone whose name I probably won't say on YouTube. He said, this man sounds rather reasonable. The Western industry has become an inviable S show of overproduced, uncompetitive garbage. The programmer budget isn't being redirected to CEO yachts. Asking these people to hold on however long until an industry reorganization seems sound. Uh, I kind of agree with that point broadly. He could have said it in a more, you know, less horrible fashion. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. And then finally, we have my favorite comment here from Fred said, who said, just another out of touch boomer that hasn't had to pay for rent or look for a job in the last 40 years. I'm surprised he didn't say that the laid off Debs need to march right up to their hiring managers, look them in the eye and give them a firm handshake, which I think I think I, I get both uh, both of those last two comments. I feel like on one hand, um, the gaming industry is getting, in fact, maybe all of Silicon Valley, really, with the layoffs at Facebook and other major companies, is getting a, a harsh uh, reality check at the moment. And that's kind of extended into the gaming industry because ultimately the gaming industry is part of the tech industry, let's be honest about it. But on the other hand, there are these absolutely cringe boomer CEOs who think that, hey, you've got a degree in computer science from MIT. How could you possibly be poor? You must have loads of money saved up so that you can just go live on a beach for a year and wait for the uh, entire industry to reorganize so that maybe you'll have a job. It's, let's be honest, it is something that has come up as a generational gap hugely often uh, where boomers just ask, you know, you're a successful millennial. Where's all your money? And the millennials like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is just this is one of those things. I I I don't completely disagree with what he's saying, and I don't understand how there are so many people that are just obviously triggered by it. Obviously, it's not greed. If the company isn't making money efficiently off a product, then your studio's gonna get closed down. I mean, we saw this with Microsoft when they uh, let go the uh, developers of Hi-Fi Rush, which was a critically acclaimed game. But I guarantee you, when we look at the uh, data, I bet most people. Uh, played it on Game Pass, and the game really, its long-term kind of success as a franchise and that studio doing what they do probably wasn't going to be making Microsoft a lot of money for their investment. And then it only takes that studio to release one game that's a total flop, and then what has Microsoft done? They've backed a studio that was making very little money for it to completely waste a bunch of money, which is just not a good investment. If you take a risk, you want there to be a big payoff for that risk. And I, I doubt a game like Hi-Fi Rush is ever going to provide you with that in the current era. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Smash the like button, like and subscribe. I always enjoy the dopamine hit and I love to hear from you about this. What do you think in the comments? And I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Peace.